Yes, many thanks for your time and your wonderful recitations, Sayyid Jalal Ma'asumi. Really, really appreciate your time. Um, now we're at the part of the show, Zara, where I think it's one of my favorite parts where we really take a deep dive into the du'as, the mm. supplications, um, the ziyaras within the school of the Ahl bayt that we can take lessons from and we kind of handpick ones that um, people don't really know much about. Um, today, on the contrary, um, it's, a, it's a du'a that we've chosen that everyone knows about, but because mm. it's Friday, uh, we want to shed light on, on some aspects of this du'a um, that perhaps can make you think, oh, I didn't know, and maybe get some thoughts going regarding the, the du'a. So, Zara, myself um, and yourself, I keep saying myself and yourself, but we are going to be welcoming um, <laughs> Ibrahim Ansari onto the show. Ibrahim, salam alaykum. Alaykum salam wa rahmatullah. How's everything? You okay? Alhamdulillah, how about yourselves? Alhamdulillah, good. Thank yeah. you. Sorry, I've got my mouth full of chocolate, so I'm not talking. <laughs> but uh, it's, welcome. It's, it's, it's your energy for the day. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much for joining us once again. Thank you very, very much for having me once again. And um, so, yeah, as um, Ali's saying, that we are hoping that you can shed some more deeper wisdom into Dua of Faj. Yes. Um, and um, yeah, what, what's your what's your actual thought of it? And okay, so Dua al Faraj um, uh, with with many of us, we believe it to be a Dua for any day. So usually, um, the question I usually get asked from yourselves is, when is this best to recite? Yeah. Um, yeah. Now, in fact, it was actually it's it's in the books when it's narrated. So, for example, Al Kulaini narrates it in Al Kafi. Um, it is narrated in Kitab al-Isbah and in another book, I believe, uh, which I cannot remember at the moment, mm -hmm. uh, where they narrate it from the Ma'sumin. They don't actually specify which Ma'sum it is. Right. In all of them, they state from the infallibles. We narrate this from the infallibles. We narrate mm. this from the, um, from the Imams. Right. And it comes in to be the dua to be recited on the night of the 23rd of Ramadan mm. which is Laylatul Qadr um, so it is best to recite it then then it carries on sorry yeah. no, no, go ahead, go ahead. then it carries on to say however you could also recite it in any other night in Ramadan mm -hmm. so here I stopped for a second I said well we recite this every day so yes. where, where did we get this from but then it carries on in fact it adds, in fact, it is also good to recite it for your whole life. Wow. It literally mm. says this, li, uh, mm. So for your whole life, meaning every single day of your life, to include this dua is amazing and has great benefits. Yeah, that's, that's very interesting because we always mm. know dua al-faraj as a dua on a daily basis or for example after salah yeah um we, i'd Ganoop, never so even in prayers like, yeah yeah, yeah I'd, I'd never have, have thought that according to <coughs> al-kafi or kulainik according to the kitab al-sbah that actually the the origin of dua al-faraj was was supposed to be recited on the night of the 23rd of ramadan yeah. um and then it goes on further to say actually no it's any other night in ramadan yeah. actually no it's recommended to do it your whole life Yes, it's so recommended to do every single day of your life. And like you correctly said, it was actually specifically for the night of Qadr. Wow. Yeah. And we have no indication as to who, which, which one of the Imams? I didn't find, personally, I did not find um, uh, where, which Imam it was because in, in, in all of the books it states from the infallibles or from the Imams it narrates this. Um, however, because of such issues, and because of the whole Senate issue, a lot of people actually try to say that this dua is very weak in terms of Senate. Mm. And that it should not be recited. And there's a scholar by the name of a Sayyid Ali ibn Musa ibn Tawus, I believe. He says, after talking about the amazingness of making duas for your brothers and your sisters, he said, so if there is such amazing fadl, if there's such amazing blessings from making dua for your brothers and your sisters, then how about the fadl of making dua for the imam of your time? Mm. He said, therefore, throw away anything mm. that says there is no senate to this. Throw away anything that says 
that this dua should not be recited because if there's fadl of making normal dua, so may Allah grant you health, there's yeah. amazing fadl in that. So how about making dua for the imam of your time, the one who you believe is the reason for your existence, yeah. the one who you believe that it wasn't for him, you wouldn't be who you are. Yeah. The one who you believe it, if it wasn't for him, the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not be on this world today. Beautiful. Um, I'd like you to recite it. What yeah, you, I yeah? actually. Yeah, that's my. That was my nice next question. Yes, yeah, so if you can <coughs> recite it, and I, I'd love to find out more about the actual words itself mm. and what they actually mean. Well. Definitely, yeah. inshallah. Bismillah. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد اللهم كن لوليك الحجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى آبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك طوعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد أحسنت أحسنت يا سكن يشد لاي أنت شو ماذا the meaning is behind this thought. Now, before I actually go into the actual meaning, people sometimes have some issues because it, it relates to the meaning. Mm. People sometimes have issues with saying, why are you making dua for the imam? Is he not sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Mm. He, is he in need of your duas? Mm. And even, even in, in the, the person, I, the scholar I just mentioned earlier, Sayyid Ali ibn, uh, Sayyid Ali ibn Musa ibn Tawus, he says, he says, and do not think that I am saying this because the Imam is, is in need of your du'as. Then he says, hey heart, hey heart, he will never be in need of this. Mm. It, mm. it is impossible for the Imam to be in need mm. of our du'as. Mm. However, the issue is that we sometimes tend to forget that first of all, the Imam is a human just like we are. Mm. Meaning, he can get ill, he can um, be in some sort of Injury. He he can. He he's a normal human being. Mm -hmm. He he lives his life the way we do. And for example, in in Ziyarat Jama'ah, which we went through uh, last episode, we said "Ajsadukum fil ajsad wa arwahakum fil arwah" to show that the imams live their lives and are normal human beings just like we are. And therefore, to always make du'a for the health of the imam is amazing. Other than the whole fact. Of that dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making a closer connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and in this case, we're making a closer connection to Sahib al Zaman, alayhi afdal salatu wa salam. And we need to make this connection to Sahib al Zaman because at the end of the day, like, like the scholar mentioned, he is the reason for our existence. Yeah. Without him, we would not exist. Mm -hmm. So the, the dua starts off by saying, Oh Allah, be for your representative. The Hujjah, son of Al Hassan. Mm. Now, here are two parts that I want to focus on. Mm. First, it says the Hujjah. Hujjah in the Arabic language, and when we and 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 the way it is referring back to your Hujjah, and mm. Hujjah of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, meaning that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is using Imam Al Mahdi as one of his signs, as one of his proofs. Mm. So sometimes we just say it as, yeah, he's the proof of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but no, that's a big thing. The Quran is the proof of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the miracles are proofs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and Imam al Mahdi is the greatest proof of Allah mm. subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wow. Especially in the life that we're yeah. living in. And then we know that it is specifically talking about Imam Mahdi because the dua specifically says Ibn al Hassan, mm -hmm. the son of Al Hassan. So it, there's, we no, know. there's no sense of ambiguity here regarding the son of Hassan, right? It couldn't be. It couldn't refer to any other son. No, no. Of it is Hassan very specific. In, okay. Very specific to Imam Al Mahdi. Of course, following the the guidelines of our scholars. Okay. Yeah. Then 
It says, your blessings be upon him and his forefathers. And, and sending <coughs> blessings upon them is something that we were ordered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to do. Mm. When he said, Sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. It's an order. Sallu is an order. Send blessings upon them. Then it says, in this hour and in every hour. I feel like this is a lesson to us as well. Mm. In this hour and in every hour. Because it is not just about us saying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, always send blessings upon uh, Imam al-Mahdi, ajallah ta'ala farja sharif. Mm. But we are also telling, it's, it's also the Ma'asumin teaching us that we must always remember him in this hour and in every hour. Mm, yeah. we, he must always be on our minds. Definitely. A guardian, a protector, a leader, a helper, a proof, and an eye. Sometimes we think an eye. Mm. What's he mean with an eye? But it is the eye in terms of hafiz that we say um, translates to protection. Okay. Yeah. We it's it's the protection. He oversees what what go what 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 uh, goes on on the day of judgment when 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 we are when we are asked or even even now today, the Imam Ajlat Al Farjah Sharif is wary of our deeds. Yeah. Whatever good and whatever bad we do is presented to the Imam of our time. Mm. And then it says, until you make him love, live on the earth in obedience to you and cause him to live in it for a long time. Obedience. Again, does the Imam need such a dua mm. for us to say, oh Allah, allow him to be obedient to you? No. It's but teaching. once again, mm. That we create a, a stronger bond with the Imam, and in this specific section where we say make him be obedient to you or make him raise in his taqwa, make him raise in his iman, it is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is limitless, meaning that no matter how obedient Imam al Mahdi is, he can get more obedient. Even the Prophet, وسلم, who is of perfection, even he can get more obedient, more iman, more taqwa. Mm. And everything, this because only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is limitless. Mm. Fantastic. It's that's, that's, that's brilliant. Mm. Actually, it's, it's very interesting to know because this dua is, mm. we read it on a daily basis, yeah. but we don't actually know the, the kind of the true meanings behind it. Um, even sometimes, like I, I was listening to a scholar who was saying that, Allahumma kun li waliyika. Even that sometimes is pronounced wrong. Yeah. So people will say, Allahumma kun li waliyika. Kun li waliyika. But that's 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 a total wrong different pronunciation. Meaning, yeah. It's a different mm. meaning. Yeah. So we have to actually make sure Allah kun li waliyika. And actually, getting the translation for that mm. is quite interesting. Oh Allah, be for your representative the hujja. Yeah. So it's it's very interesting to know. Um, I want to recap. Go I've ahead. taken some notes. Mm. I think we we got there's got like two or three minutes left. But, uh, before we go yeah. to the recap, so we we're, we're asking for this connection. But do you think that? Um, I remember seeing sort of like the benefits of reciting this, that you know, numerous. Do you yeah. know any that are particular um, prevalent to this dua if we recite it? Of course, there are um, many benefits to any dua that is recited. Um, part of uh, the benefits of making dua for Imam al Hujjah is actually uh, showing that you are being patient for his reappearance. It is showing that you are in the state of waiting for his reappearance. And in fact, Mentioning that note, one of the best a'mal that a mu'min can do during the ghaybah of Imam Sahib al-Zaman is waiting for his reappearance. But here there's a very important point. Mm -hmm. When we say waiting for his reappearance, it doesn't mean that we just say waiting and doing nothing. Um, but of course, part of it is being obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. By being obedient, you are showing that you are waiting for Sahib al-Zaman. Mm -hmm. By constantly calling out to Sahib al-Zaman shows that you are waiting for him. And a very important thing, giving sadaqah in the name of Sahib al-Zaman is also one of the best ways of showing that you are waiting for his reappearance. Mm. Beautiful. Thank Fantastic. you so much. I hope people have benefited just like we have, yep. I have personally. 100%. Um, as you said, we recite this and it can become something that's like, you know, a repetitive yeah. Um, technique, but you know, to actually think about what we're reciting. Do you want to quickly go over your recap? Um, I guess it's just a couple of points, just mm. for people to take away from. Is that it's just that the the uh, in Kulaini, well, Kulaini mentioned in, in the in the book of Al Kafi and also in in Kitab Al Asbah is that um, this particular dua was actually narrated by 
one of the infallibles yeah um and it's recommended or it was initially recommended or this person narrated that it's recommended to recite on the 23rd of ramadan which is the eight yeah. um eight, it's Laylat the Qadr. Laylat Qadr. Yeah. um but then it goes on to say no let's it's recommended to to recite every day within ramadan and then it goes no it's recommended to do your whole lifetime yes. i think that's that's one thing that was quite interesting to to know and also that um there are certain words within the dua itself like for example um wa aina wa qaida wa so it's 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 essentially saying that um you know uh, i guess send your blessings upon uh, the the imam in this hour yeah. and every hour um a guardian a protector a leader a helper a proof and an eye and yeah. this is the eye that, for example, is it's the, the connotations of the eye as being a protector or a guardian, overseeing the imam Overse- at all times. Overseeing the imam at all time. I think yeah, that was one of one of the main things um, that I guess people can take away from. Brilliant. There's thank a lot you more, so much. but um, just you know, two or three. Yeah, points. we're out of time, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you very much. Have a blessed day. Inshallah. Thank you. Likewise, See you yourself, too. Inshallah. Off and to the break. We are having a break, so don't go away, unless you're making a cup of tea. Um, but next I'll be speaking to Sister Barak Hussain um, in The Specialist.